Popses, back at you with another video. My name's Megan. This is weird for me to do because I don't have somebody else sitting with me, usually my sisters on this channel. If you've not watched this before, then you might not know that, but this is a little out of the norm for me. I don't usually do this. I've always wanted to, but these videos can be time consuming with the recording process, the editing process, so it feels pretty cool, but also very scary. <laughs> Bear with me, I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible. For those of you that might not know, I am a vocal coach. I love singing, I love teaching singing, and I love teaching singing to people that can sing and people that can't sing, or people that want to sing but don't know if they can. If you've never been on this channel, then you probably might not know that, but I am a huge fan of SB19, so just a little disclaimer, this is not a video to bash these guys, this is not a video to say that they can't sing. You will not hear any of that coming from me. Most of this is just my honest, professional opinion. I'm going to be as unbiased as possible because like I said, I do love these guys. Some of this might go over some of your heads and some of you might really catch on and understand what I'm talking about. But like I said, I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as I can. This song, it is not my first time hearing it. So if you are here to see a vocal coach's first reaction to SB19 covering this song, you're at the wrong place. I don't know if there is a vocal coach that has done that yet. I did react to to this but it's more on a fangirling sense because that's kind of much more what we do on this channel. So this is pretty much just a breakdown of their vocals, me talking about how they are sounding, good things and bad things, things that could be improved, things that I hear and also there were a lot of people that were saying that they wanted to hear what I personally would say to help them fix that. It is time to start, I'm so excited and I'm also nervous. Please bear with me. I'm gonna have to try to say some of these words in Tagalog and it's, it's, it, oh. Speaking Tagalog always makes me nervous. Okay, I have my handy little Casio here. This isn't mine, I actually took it from work. I asked my boss if it was okay if I could use it. <laughs> I use this usually in my classroom of four and five year olds. I don't teach them vocals, we just do music stuff and it's fun. I love kids, so that's one of my fun classes. I love it. It's really not like a kitty keyboard. Um, a lot of musicians will use these to kind of like take around if they need to. Okay, I have my Casio and lap. Here we go. Oh God. Okay, there's something I want to talk about on Kins right here. I do remember his part. I do remember hearing he got a little sharp sometimes, and it's not throughout his phrasing, it's usually kind of at the end of his phrasing. So I think what happens is he starts his phrasing out well, and then he starts to kind of push a little more with air. He tends to kind of push a little more than he needs to, so it's making his phrases go a little sharp. <laughs> Yeah, he's a little sharp, definitely right there um, is where I hear it the most. He did kind of this vocal run. Ken is no stranger to vocal riffs and runs. It's one of the things that I love so much about his style of singing. He does have a very like deep and soulful voice, which I love that, but he also has a very R&B styled voice because of the kind of music he listens to. I can totally relate to his music taste. If you don't follow us on Twitter, then you might not have seen all the fangirling I have done over Ken's voice and covers and music choices. Yeah, like we have almost the exact same taste in music, kind of. My taste in music is very everywhere. I listen to just really anything. I just love music. But I think one of my huge preferences is definitely the kind of music that Ken listens to. So I love that style of singing that he has. I see where he gets it from because of the kind of music he listens to. But something that he kind of did there, and this isn't to say that Ken does this often actually, this was like probably my first time hearing him do this, is he did a riff where he kind of da 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 He kind of jerked a little too hard and it made his note right after super sharp. Uh, uh, that D that he gets to. Da, da, da. Let me go back to that. Uh, 
he's very sharp right there. It is very possible that he might have just kind of slipped a little. I don't see that being something that Ken does often, so I don't think that was like something that would need to be fixed. It might have just been a moment where he kind of slipped up and he honestly after that was probably kicking himself. Vocalists do this kind of thing. We beat ourselves up over the smallest things, but honestly at the end of the day nobody's gonna think about it as hard as he is. So it's really not that big of a deal, especially knowing Ken's voice and knowing how he actually sings, usually and that's not really in his style to do. So I think he just kind of had a little slip up, but if that was by chance something that he struggled with, I've never heard him sing this song other than on here. If this was like a common thing for him, I think something beneficial would be, and this is for any moment that somebody is like struggling with getting through their vocal riffs and runs, if they find themselves kind of not really singing it very clear, like it's lacking clarity or they're ending up on a, a note and it sounds flat or sharp or it's out of key. Usually that's just kind of due to not really taking a step back and trying to take those vocal riffs and runs slowly. So the key is to take that really slow. Uh, uh, is what he's saying there. So taking it real slow. Uh, taking it a little faster once that sounds completely perfect, going a little faster after that until you get to the actual tempo of the song and making sure it sounds clear. Like I said, that's not really in Ken's character to do that from what I've heard. I think his voice probably just slipped and that happens. It sucks, but it happens. <laughs> All right, Justin's part is next. I'm so excited to hear this. <laughs> Okay, before we get to still. Justin is a little sharp. Um, he lifted a little too much on the ending of the he, He's just, it's going a little too sharp. He does look a little tense in his singing at this moment. Uh, I haven't seen Justin sing too, too much live, but he definitely in this video seems like he could be nervous, which would make sense because this is a very vocal song from what I've heard. And as far as I know, Justin wasn't actually a vocalist before he became a part of Show BT. So I'm going to guess that he was probably nervous and he's got some tension. That's not to say that he is going to strain or injure himself. He's pretty far from that, but I'm assuming it's very, very uncomfortable and not to mention probably very hard for him to sing through that nervousness because the more you tense up, the more you have to kind of push and try to make it sound good. And so he's pretty much overcompensating while also being tense and it's sounding quite sharp. So the biggest thing is really to just kind of try to relax. It's easier said than done. That was okay. He's a little shaky there too. All His whole phrase right there was just pretty much due to his nervousness. If he could kind of try to loosen up. I'm wondering if they warmed up before this. I'm kind of assuming they did not, but I could be wrong. I don't know how trained they are, but warm ups go a long way with confidence for one, but also with just warming up your voice and making sure it's going to do what you need it to do. So warm ups are definitely a step one for something like this. Anything from like bubbles or lip trills, maybe even in front of a keyboard. Oh, it's hard to do it here. Just something to let your voice warm up, basically. So loosening up for one, warming up is another, um, and then for the tension, there are vocal exercises for that, but it's hard for me to kind of get into that without being one-on-one -on -one with that person. I'd really have to see where it seems like their tension is. His tension wasn't too much there, though. It seemed much more like nervousness to me. One thing that I just noticed with Justin's Good. His tongue. It kind of looks to me like he's lifting his tongue in the back 
on the ending of that phrase. It was so close to being in tune. The further he got into his entire phrasing there, the more in tune he started to get. He started off very sharp and it seemed like he was kind of correcting himself throughout. But at the very end, uh, be, uh, I think that's what he's saying. It, it just sounds like his tongue is kind of in the way there. Be, uh, uh, it's, it's a little closed up. It's not too closed up, but he definitely needs to relax his tongue right there. Dropping his jaw a little, might help with that, but honestly, I think just really feeling that ah and letting that ah resonate, thinking more like ah, like you're at a doctor's office and they're putting the, the stick on your tongue and they're needing to look inside of your mouth, really exaggerating that ah. Not too dramatically because he was almost there, so just a tad bit ah, ah, just finding that pocket, it, it would sound perfect. Okay, Stell's part, here we go. That was very nice. Um, with Stell, honestly, I probably won't comment on him too much because as we all know, Stell has an amazing voice. If I did have like a one-on-one -on -one session with him, then I would probably like work on things here and there but I am just a firm believer of don't fix what's not broken, and Stell's voice is definitely nowhere near broken. You probably won't hear me saying much about Stell on here. I really, really am so curious what kind of training he's had. He has to have had some kind of training. He There's things that he does vocally that I just feel like he had to have been taught that. To think that this kind of stuff would come naturally would be so shocking for me. I would wanna know how he discovered how to do these certain things, if he can recall even knowing how, but oh, I'm so curious. I, I wanna talk to Stell so bad to find out what kind of training he's had because I'm just so curious what kind of training, like his history and training, I would love to know. There's like little bits here and there where he's a little pitchy, but that just happens to everybody. I, I sing pitchy too sometimes. And it's also depending on how rested he is, how much water he's had, what time of the day this is. If they did this like right after waking up, that would just flat out suck. That happens. I've, I've had to do that. I had to wake up for an early morning TV show and it was awful. It was so bad trying to sing like that. I sang horribly. It's just, it's awful. But all those things can contribute to the way your voice sounds. So that also could contribute to how they're sounding at the moment. But honestly, I think they're doing really good so far. I mean, there's just small things here and there. Okay, so let's get to Josh. I think this is the one that a lot of people are really wanting to hear what I have to say about. Josh is more of a rapper, as we all know. So hearing him sing is, for me, a delight because I love hearing people sing and when I don't hear them sing that often, I get excited to hear it. But, uh, okay, let's hear what he has to do here. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's point some of this out. I was very shocked to hear what people were having to say about Josh's voice. I think people are being a little too critical of somebody that usually raps. That's not to say that a person can't rap and be a singer at the same time, but let's give Josh some credit here. This isn't what he usually does, so I applaud him for that because singing, it's not just something that people have or don't have. Singing takes time and um, takes training. Usually always no great singer is really ever where they're at without some kind of proper training in their history. There are some people that are just natural singers and that's fine, but I believe that everybody can sing, but just like any other instrument, you have to be taught in some way and some people need a little more teaching than others. So Josh's part here, he has a lot of tension. There's so much tension. So with Justin, there was a slight amount of tension. He seems so nervous to me. I'm not quite sure if that's the case or if he's just really focused in trying to get to his spot, but to be honest, he is actually quite on key. Somebody who's not actually trained or knows what to look for in vocals might not realize what's happening, but they might see that it seems pretty forced. And that's because of that tension. He's real tensed up. He's almost in a sense like biting on those higher notes. Da, 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 da. 
and like he opened up at the end there but he like really bit down on the parts before that like kind of working up to it that's what usually people's natural instinct is to kind of close up on those higher parts or the parts that are approaching a higher part but you want to do the opposite you really need to open up there because if you close up the resonance that is trying to come out is going to all stay in there and it's going to sound out of tune so the more you open up the more your resonance has space to freely flow and the less you have to push so that is like a huge thing that would help Josh is to just loosen up just let it go do not clench on those high notes or the notes working up to high notes you just have to let it freely come out you might have voice cracks but that's just because your voice isn't used to doing these kinds of things it just takes time and training and just working on it over and over again but opening up more would be so much more beneficial than having to close up and push extra let's hear what he did here I, I'll try to get a little more technical if I can <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's just so closed up right there. Like, I just want to tell him, like, Josh, open your mouth more. <laughs> closing up is going to make you have to push extra and honestly like he really does not sound bad he has it there he knows what notes he needs to hit he just needs to open up more <laughs> That's another thing I wanted to talk about with Josh too, is breath. His breath is very, if you notice, he's having to take these huge breaths and it's like after like two words, he's not really using his breath support wisely. And that just goes with not being trained how to properly do that in order to like get him kind of used to that there's always straws straws is a breathing technique I I'm not gonna take the time to explain all that but something that he could easily do is to just um, have his hand about like maybe a uh, half a foot away from his face and what he'll do is he'll blow for like he'll put on a metronome so uh, click 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 just at a certain tempo he'll inhale for four inhale two three and then exhale one two three four and while he's doing that he'll inhale and then when he breathes out he needs to feel his breath consistently hitting his hand throughout that entire time and then once he's done that then he will sing a note he'll inhale for two one two and then he'll sing at maybe let's say like a G he'll inhale one two exhale ah uh, two three for and just keep it on tempo and trying to make that sound steady throughout. I mean, there's a couple of different ways to make breath support work. I know that's like a huge struggle with a lot of singers, so uh, maybe that might help some of you too. But breath support is very important too, and I think the reason he's having to take such deep breaths is because he's pushing so hard because he's keeping his mouth closed and he's biting down on those notes. So, so many ways to fix that. He might not even have to do the breathing exercises. As long as he just kind of opens up more, he might not have to feel like he's needing to take in so much air and use so much air. Uh, let me see where he's at. Na, 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 na. Oh, he's near. I don't know where Josh's vocal bridge is, but he's near it. Oh, and he gets up to that G too. For a male, that's a very uncomfortable spot. So I give him props for singing right there, not technically being a singer. That is impressive to me just because, I mean, some of my male students who I've had for a while don't even like singing right there. And of course I, I make them because you know, I'm teaching them. They don't like it, but that's the hardest part. And those hardest parts are the ones that have to be worked up the most. So warming up once again would have been beneficial for him. I don't know if he did. I, it doesn't sound like he did to me. Bubbles or lip trills. If you don't know what those are, look them up. Do them before every performance. Definitely take bubbles and lip trills over your presagio from the beginning of your range to the end of your range. Go all the way down, all the way up. Just lip trill your way all through there. Get yourself warmed up, but also 
also that tension. If I was vocal coaching Josh one-on-one, -on -one, I would definitely try to get him to release that tension. So really, really loose, uh, blah, 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 blah. He's just so tense and I would love to help him on that because it just looks so uncomfortable and I hate that he's having to feel that way while singing. I'm sure it makes him super self-conscious and just really nervous. So I feel for him. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Josh. I think some mild training would definitely help him feel a little more confident in his voice because it seems like he's possibly kind of lacking in that sense. Okay, so June. He ended off that well. Okay, another voice that, I mean, I, I love these guys' voices. I love all their voices. Sejun actually is very good about opening his mouth. Mouth opening is something that I go over a lot with my students because when they get to those uncomfortable spots, like I said, that most people, all their natural instinct is to close up and that's the opposite of what you wanna do. Sejun is really good about opening his mouth and opening it naturally. The only problem is that he opens wide and that's not to say he has to sound like a choir singer and sing everything like this Ah, da, da. Like he definitely doesn't uh, have to sing like that, but it would help keep him in tune more often. So June is another one. It sounds like all of them kind of lean more towards sharp and that's even including Stell. Stell gets a little sharp sometimes too, but so June, he seems to go sharp often and he doesn't start his phrases out like that, but he ends them like that because he lets his mouth stay wide or it's, it's like open, but it's wide. And that will make you sound much more out of tune than if you were to just open and keep it a little more down instead of out. So June has braces. I don't know if he sang like this without braces. I know braces can be very uncomfortable. A lot of my students go through braces and we have to kind of do some adjustments. I've never had braces so I, I can't relate to that but I do feel for them and I feel for Sejun because he does sing often and having to deal with that with his braces I'm sure he does struggle sometimes. I don't know if that would be due to his braces. It very well could be. He could be trying to like kind of avoid them so he's staying wide but wide singing is definitely going to get you out of tune or make you have to push more because once again you're open but your resonance is going to be bouncing in here instead of going out and coming out a little more in tune. I want to hear it again though. Ooh, that that got quite pitchy. Ooh. kind of jerked his, his um, in a sense, kind of what Ken did there, but not as pitchy, but he jerked it quite hard and it, it had him sounding pretty pitchy. So I don't really see Sejun being like that either, but same thing, taking those slowly, speeding it up gradually, might fix that if that is like a constant struggle of his, but I haven't really heard Sejun do that either. So. I think that's probably just one of those things. All in all with Sejun though, he does have a great voice. Um, he just gets a little pitchy sometimes because of the shape that he keeps his mouth in. If he can go a little more down instead of wide and singing wide, that might help him stay in pitch and maybe not even have to push as hard. He's really not pushing very hard, but Sejun does sing with a lot of emotion and I love that. I don't think the pushing that I hear from him is so much him trying to get his phrasings out as much as it is him just singing with emotion. You're moving on. Uh, keeping that steady too is important. Mm, see, that was good. Oh, that low note. Uh, sing rapping. Yeah. Ooh. 
something that I want to point out that I really like that Stell is doing. He's singing in the background, but he's not pushing it out. He's singing in falsetto, which means that he there's not so much power back there. It's just this nice little extra trinket of beauty in all of this. And I love that he's doing that. I love that he's not mixing because then it would just sound like he's trying to overpower. So that's a good call. I don't know whose call that is. I don't know if that's on the original song, but it's nice to have that because it adds a little more without overpowering what Sejun is doing. So I love that. And I compliment whoever's idea that is. <laughs> Oh, something else that Ken did right there um, that he does throughout the entire song and that I super noticed um, is he sings the octave down and you're gonna hear this in a second whenever I talk about the harmony parts that Sejun put together but I love having that lower octave it adds such power and it, it, it just spices things up it sounds so good so that's also a really good call doing that as well yes. Oh. Okay, so if you're unsure of what just happened there, you see Josh coming up and you're like maybe wondering what part Josh is singing. So Ken is doing that same thing. At first he was doing the octave of Stell, but now he's doing the octave of Josh. Josh is now on the melody line, the da 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 and then Sejun is up on the da 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 Yeah, it's, it's harmonizing together, it sounds good. That is a good call for them to have put Sejun up on the top and have Josh go in at the melody because Josh I know would have struggled up on that higher harmony part. So that is a good call and honestly I praise Sejun for that because that is not as easy as you would think switching from the melody to the harmony. That takes somebody that has pretty good ear training. I can definitely tell Sejun has a good ear for harmonies because if he was the one that did all of these harmonies on this song then yeah I'm gonna bet that we can relate on that sense because yeah, it's, it's just so fun. As a singer, when you have harmonies down, it's something that is just like the whole other language that you can speak and it's amazing. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, that's what happened there. Josh went in on the melody, Sejun went up to the harmony, Ken is singing down below on that octave for the melody. So right here he goes higher. Josh. how much he is opening his mouth. He is opening it up such a good amount. It doesn't look so dramatic, but it's open enough to where his resonance is coming out. He's in tune. It sounds great. I love it. Hold on, let's go back. I gotta see that again. Mm, style. Yes. Ah, okay. I know this part really well because I went back and looked at this part so that I would be prepared for this video and know what harmony parts they are singing. So let me pull out my notes. Oh, I remember now. Okay. So I figured out where they're at. Sejun is on a G. F, F, B flat. Honestly, so like I struggle hearing where Josh is on here. I think he might be doubling somebody and who I think he's doubling is possibly Stell. And I, what I'm thinking they're singing is a B flat C, E flat D. Da, 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 da. And then Justin comes in on a... Okay, so I was like so 
so wondering where is that seventh chord? I knew I heard a seventh in here and I was like, I don't hear another harmony part. I don't hear it. And so I was thinking maybe one of them breaks off and then I figured it out. So basically what Sejun did, it gets super technical, but he's got some sus chords in here. And at one point with the melody, what Ken is singing, and I don't, I'm not gonna get so, so technical into it. That would be a whole other video, honestly. He has two sus chords in here. With what Ken is singing at a moment, it would make a seven chord. So there is a seven chord in there, but it's not within the harmony. So I knew I heard a seven, but it wasn't what I was actually thinking it was. So that was very interesting to find out was the sus chord. Using sus chords and harmonies, that was such a good call on his and it sounds so, like obviously you can hear it, it just sounds so beautiful. A little pitchy in some areas, but it still sounds great to me. Honestly, I really wouldn't even try to fix this part because it, it still sounds sounds on point. Let me hear it again, just because I love it. Oh, oh and then Ken's melody right there is so good. Keep up steady. Ah, Josh! Oh man, I think he psyched himself out on that one. But there, that went that breath. So I think actually he would benefit from doing some breathing exercises vocally. You could tell he was running out of breath there. Da 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 da. He started to. Uh, and it started to really taper off and it was pretty pitchy. I honestly think he just was not really prepared for this part right here. It could be fixed though, it really can. He's closed up again. I don't know if anybody can notice this, but he is. <laughs> a little right there but he could he could benefit from opening up a little more honestly though I don't think that's so much of his issue there as much as it is his breathing learning how to keep that breath steady the entire time making sure you're using it well he's tightening up right there but I'm, I'm honestly wondering if he's maybe tightening up a little too much right there I think he definitely did he's trying to put that pressure right there there is a way to make that blend a little better god I want to work with Josh so bad I want to help him out I feel so bad for him because I can so tell that he's trying but he just he really just needs the training he really does I can so tell I think he would really benefit from like just even a few vocal lessons could possibly go a long way with him so you get this to the next part <laughs> Nice. They said nice right after. Wait, did they say nice right after I said nice? Wait, hold on. Before we get to that key change. <laughs> I'm thinking that was Stell, and I loved that. And then there's Ken on his daughter. <laughs> I can't even get to that. Oh, that sounds so good though. Ooh, that lower needs to get a little more stable. I think that was Ken, maybe. Oh, they were really close. I think Ken got a little pitchy. Confusing. I think I heard Stell while looking at Justin. And I was like, Justin? <laughs> okay, wait. Wait, was Justin singing that lower part? He looks 
so concentrated on it. I'm so fairly certain he's singing that low part. Already give Stell props on this part because he's all the way up there. Ah! He's using reinforced falsetto. I was wrong whenever we were watching this. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that he was mixed. It sounds so powerful because he's using reinforced falsetto, which is why I thought it was mixed. But then when I heard it again, I was like, wait, that's not mixed. It sounds so good. But my point is, right here, he gets even further. He does the. Ah! And he's like kind of he just keeps it going and going like that phrase god he his breath oh my god okay I'm fangirling sorry <laughs> just it on that low part <laughs> he's still going Mm, the blending is beautiful, guys. Oh, yes. E drop that E. e. Okay, let me hear that one more time at the end and see if it Oh my god. Yeah, he was sharp on that one right there. give him props for this one. The harmonies were killer. Like, so amazing. They were really well written on Sejun's part, so huge props to Sejun for that. So good. I love the combination of harmonies that he used here. I think it was just gorgeous, and their performance of it was just so, so good. I think they blended so well with it being that many voices. There was pitchiness here and there, but not enough for me to say, like, y'all gotta work on that. No, I honestly would not change it. I think it sounds great. I would maybe listen to it without the track and see how it sounds, but with the track it actually sounds great. So super good job on their part with these harmonies. I think it sounds awesome. I love it so much. All of them have like little things here and there that they can work on with their voices. Of course, some more than others, but obviously the ones that need the more work are the ones that probably haven't had that much vocal training, if at all. It's a learning process. It's nothing that they're doing wrong. It's just something that they need to learn. So I hope that's what you take away from this is that these guys are not bad singers in any sense. And of course there's amazing singers in here. It is such a dream of mine to work with them someday. I think it would be so, so cool to be able to, for one, find their ranges. I really want to know what their ranges are. But second, just be able to help them to kind of sort out some of these kinks here and there and also get them feeling a little more confident for the ones that I can tell aren't feeling so confident. But all in all, I think as vocalist, SB19 has so much potential. And then the writing, Sejun does a killer job with the writing of the vocals. So I give him huge props once again for that. But man, I love this cover. And that Nothing against Michael. It's a great song, but God, I love hearing those harmonies. I love the rap part. Like, I just love this version. It's so, so good. And I say that completely unbiased. I just love it. Anyways, I hope I didn't leave anything out that I was like wanting to get to. If you're wanting to hear much more of a breakdown of the parts of the harmonies, then let me know. I hope that's not what y'all were like super waiting for. 
because it, it just it can get really technical I don't know how many people were technically looking for that I do have my notes with like all the harmony parts and stuff if you want to kind of pick my brain on that but that's just much more technical this was much more of a vocal analysis not like a vocal part analysis there were people that were asking for me to react to this with the MR removed which is the music recording removed honestly as a vocal instructor and I'm not gonna get too technical with this I don't prefer MR removes just because whenever you do that you kind of lose some of the vocal parts as well and it kind of changes the color of their voices I don't like it I can hear their parts just fine even with the track so I can see the intrigue for them with other people but me personally I want to hear the vocals fully I'm so sorry if you were looking for that I'm just not a huge fan of MR removed videos but great job guys I love this I don't know if you'll see this but you guys keep working hard on your vocals your performance for sure you're killing it you're doing so awesome and vocally I think you guys can do so great I just I hope that you receive that training that you need and probably want to anyways I hope y'all enjoyed this video I'm so sorry if this was just too weird for you and way over your head if you have any questions let me know and I can try to answer them but other than that that is my take on SB19's cover of Bucky by Gal. All in all, they did a great job. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a huge thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to our channel down below. Click the notification bell because we do post often. And we will see you next time here on K-Pop Bye. Jerry and Tyler, the world the same. I just tell my rules of his couple.